I'll get paranoid now that when I come back, there's going to be security guard waiting for me. Get rested. It's adhering to a thousand year old recipe. What bloody iron brew chicken pakora? Welcome to the channel and welcome to the Glencoe Mountain Ski Resort, an absolutely amazing spot on the western side of Scotland. But it's a ski resort. I was hoping today to do a little bit of snowboarding, but unfortunately last night we had rain, then snow, then this morning we had 60 mile an hour winds. They haven't even opened the uplift this morning, so it doesn't look like that's going to be a go. It's not a problem. I've always got a backup plan and that's exactly what I'm going to put into action today. I've got a couple of wicked looking little hikes to do around this Glencoe area as I slowly start heading and meandering south towards the Midlands. It is however a massive long drive back to the Midlands so as per normal I'm going to break it up into a two day stint. I've got a wicked little spot down in Moffat to car camp overnight. I've used it before but I've never shown it on the channel so today's the day. For now though, it is getting blooming cold out here in just a jumper. My sandwich is getting cold. I'm gonna get my stuff sorted and we can get on the road. Dang, I couldn't not stop here all my days. Check out this view, this is insane. Wow. Oh, look at the state of the view here. Mountains in the distance. And a sick old lock down the way. Wow, this area is beautiful. Right, let's go see if we can find the head of this trail for a little bit of a bumble. Pretty cool, man. I've never explored this area I'm going to. Got a couple of little spots if we get the time. And it should be nice. They did a load of Glencoe last year, so it's nice to do a little bit the other side away from Glencoe, heading back south. Go on, mate. Nah, game on then. Oh my days. Look at the state of that mountain. There's pure white in front of me. Up to the bridge of Orchie. Apparently we're going. Ah, uh, yeah, hopefully, because that's the bloody height. Orchie. Bit of a random name, eh? Hopefully there's blooming parking. Mama, where we're we going. Oh yeah. What? I, I just dunno. I'll get a park here. I guess that's alright. Boom. Bridge of Orchie station. I guess it's an official station on the train line for trains. I don't know. I didn't really uh, I mean I looked at it, it looks like a nice bumble, but in all honesty. Oh, I didn't evidently do too much research about it, did I? No. Mate. This looks like the train spotting station. Doesn't it? I don't know. It's a bit random, mate. I could be wrong. Someone hit me in the comments. What station was it they stopped at in the original train spotting when they went out in the wild? That's mad. More importantly for us, the trail. It is an official trail. It's called the Bridge of Orchard to Inveroran. Inveroran. I think there's too many letters in that word. But hey, that's where we're in it. Little short, stumpy out and back, 2.8 miles. Go one four there, one four back. And it looks like we might have, <laughs> might have a nice view on the way up. Uh, yeah, bit of a change plan. It's a long way. It's that side. <laughs> and that's a bit of a mad one. I don't know. I might drive down the road and park down there. Seems a better option. <laughs> I guess whoever put that trail up together was like, came up on the train and that's where they started their trail. Hey, this is a way better place to start the trail. It's like over there. Check that for the third time, just to be sure. Windows as well, eh? Yeah. And before you ask, <laughs> no! Over dark parking. Shame as well, it's a nice spot, but there's blooming loads of spots where you can park overnight up here, it's ridiculous. Just keep following the road and 
Mud lay-bys just off the road. Decent amount, like, size off the road and mud views. Wicked, mate, everywhere. Well, here it is in all its blazing, gushing glory. The Bridge of Orche. Mate, I've got imp on this one. Oh, this will give you a giggle. Apparently, and I quote, the Bridge of Orche is a village in Glen Orche in Argyll and Brute. And here's a genius bit. It was named after the crossing of the river, i.e. a bridge over the river Orche. Genius! Ah, and it was built by the British after the Battle of Culloden in 1746, to say. So again, another military road and some it stooped in blood and turmoil, you know. It does make me wonder though, I mean like we go around Scotland and we see all these military roads and we see all these bridges, what the bloody hell was going on before here? How were people getting around with no roads? I mean I know we're talking hundreds of years ago, I'm talking tracks and such, do you know what I mean? Like. Did nobody ever think, like, we have to get over that river? Did you just come every day, like, there's a geezer who lives over here and he wants to get over here because that's where his sheep are or something. And every day, pain in the arse, but he has to come down in the morning and swim across the river, get wet and cold, and then go out with the sheep for the day. Did nobody ever think to build a bridge? I mean, come on, I, I, just, I, I don't get that bit. It's a bit random, isn't it? How come, you know, the British Army or whatever came up here with all these and then decided to build all these military roads? I mean... Did no one connect before? I don't know. Maybe it's clan against clan up here and such. Maybe that's how it was. I mean, I guess we could say the same about like England down in the south with the Roman roads. What the bloody hell were we doing before then? Must have been tracks. And there must have been ways of getting over rivers. You're just like, you wouldn't ride for hundreds of miles on an horse, would you, and come to a river and go, oh, shit, no way over that. Bugger it. I'll turn around and go back home. And do that every time? No, for hundreds of years. I don't, I don't know. I'm waffling, but... Yeah, I don't get it. <sighs> well, gotta say it, the trail's opening up nicely. Like I say, it's just an out and back. Looks like we're just gonna boss to a point, maybe get a view and then scramble back down, but yeah, nice. I mean, it's uphill, it's not too much yard work and there's no one else around. It's pretty serene, man. Just being out here on my own with the elements. Woo, Oma, the rain and wind has just started kicking in. I'll just come around the corner and boom in my face. Bit of a mad one. But, good news. Got a sneaky little can of mount, you know, you know. And to be honest, I think this is the highest point on the trail. It looks like the trail keeps going, but it heads downhill towards, I don't know, whatever village that is down there. Ooh. I think for now, get this little bad boy a slap and tickle. Yeah, you know, you know. I never think about heading back. Gordon Bennett. Really is kicking in with the wind, but wow. It's not a bad spot for it. Blimey neck. Oh, I'm just looking behind me. <laughs> this is a nice looking peak and a trail heading up that way. Yep, there's one for the future. Yeah. It is a nice spot though. Wicked mate. Wow. Looks like the Glencoe Mountain's got a bit of snow on it as well. It's looking pretty decent. Just a shame about this window. Right, let's head back to the crib, eh? Let's prioritise and, uh, oh my god, chaos. Get the kettle on, wherever it is. Somewhere in that. You can do it. There it is. Dang it, blooming gas is cold and nearly empty. Double whammy. Blooming heck, could be here all week with this darn thing. There might be snow here by then. Could be an idea. But no, we need to prioritise. We've got a little gusher to go check out. Oh yeah, it's a little waterfall down the way. Well, I think what I'm going to do before I move, is have a little bit of a tidy up in here. I've got something I want to show you. Something that I'm considering taking with me to France. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the All Powers R1500. And basically what it is, is portable power in a box everything you see in a van build for the electrics is here simply in this one box and i've got to say i've had a few of these all power stations now 
and I'm well impressed with them, mate. They're as good, if not better in some respects, than any of the other ones on the market and come in at equally a good price, sometimes even cheaper than some of the other makes on the market. Of course, it comes with your standard four three pin 240 volt sockets. It also comes in with a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket. Also, 200 watt USB-C outputs, fast charging all day long, two standards. And here's a wicked one on this one. It comes with two wireless chargers on the top. Display wise, it's got everything you need to know. It's got ins and outs, and also percentage for your power, but it's also got Bluetooth and wireless, so you can connect to it with an app and completely control it from your mobile phone from a distance. And in terms of power, it's got a thousand watt amp hours worth of power. It runs up to about 1800 watts and it will surge to 3000. What that means is essentially you can plug pretty much anything into this, up to say like even an induction cooker. As long as you're not hitting 2000, 1800 watts, say like setting seven, yeah, you'll still be good to run it on this thing while you're still charge all your other stuff up and a thousand watt amp hours you could literally run a compressor fridge for days these things really are a top bit of kit if you're after getting power in your car camping setup or your van build that's not quite got everything done or you just want to go out camping with a bit of bling on a weekend in the summer and in terms of the summer all powers at the minute the marketing this unit with a 200 watt solar panel as well either one two or three with the kit you could purchase poly not mono but you'll still on a good day with that 200 watt solar panel get about 130s 140s and maybe even push 150 amount of watt hours coming back into this unit for every hour you got the panel out and i should say like if you're into these the solar panels are pretty cool there are definitely something that are a nice addition to have with your power unit i've used mine quite a lot i move around but even me two or three hours in the morning or a late afternoon sometimes just to tweak it up and i've got to be honest those solar panels they come with so many cables it's unreal they even come with a cable to recharge your car battery i'm seriously considering taking that with me on the euro trip and that's the thing with these all power units i really am impressed with how they send everything out it all comes in great packaging even your cables come with its own little wallet everything's just got that little bit extra detail that yeah sells it for me and now with these R models they've got the design totally sorted i mean they look just as good as anything on the market one last note the recharging of course it's got fast recharging it'll recharge in a couple of hours you can also recharge it from anything else 12 volt cigarette lighter solar panels pre-mentioned and if you've got the kit you can even hook it up to your car battery to recharge it a top top bit of kit and one that's well worth looking at if you're looking at a power station on the market the all powers are 1500 i'll leave a link in the description where you can go and check it out both the unit itself and the solar panels that go with it also <laughs> Great, uh, this is nice and welcoming. Not, uh, charges supply, forestry commission, and then no authorised access. What's going on here? This is the second place that we pulled in at that's like this. Oh, I don't know what to do here. Can I actually even walk down here? Honestly, don't know what's going on here. Same as the last place, looks like they're like redoing the car park or something. I don't know, shaling bits around here. Really drive me nuts. I spent 15 minutes before we left because I checked the app and it said you had to pay for parking down here on the Ringo app. So yeah, 15 minutes trying to settle the bloody Ringo app. But apparently I'm already registered, but it won't let me log in. Uh, I don't know what's going on with it. And then we get down here, and yeah, there's nothing. It's bloody random. I think I'm going the wrong way. Bear with. Yeah, look, it's official. Welcome to Strom Hill, the old River Locky Falls Trail. Firm but uneven ground. Take your time. You do. Oh, birds here as well. Surprise. <laughs> oh, I'm still flummoxed about what they're going on and doing there. And why the gates are all locked up. Why right, it says there's 24 hour security. I wonder where he's sat then. I didn't see him. Just saying. <laughs> I'm getting paranoid now that when I come back, there's going to be a security guard waiting for me. Get arrested. Thrown in jail. 10 years in the slammer on oh, my days breaking and entering is that even oh it's not breaking and entering is it it's trespassing 
that's got a weird law, hasn't it? That's why all these base jumpers off buildings and crane climbers and such, you get away with it because of the weird trespassing law. Right ho, let's not think about that. Let's go see this wondrous waterfall. Ooh. I've been running, I'm out of breath. Mate, this feels like Swallow Falls, this is random. This is the way it's laid out, but oh my days. Yeah, wicked. That's pretty cool, I like that. I just, it's not one gusher, is it? It's just a multitude of gushes spraying everywhere. Oh, that's pretty impressive and pretty cool because obviously you're not allowed to come and see this and no one's ever going to see it ever again in the worldy world of ever. But there it is on YouTube. Please don't ban me. To be honest, and I'll, 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 I'll be honest, I took a little route around it so I didn't actually go through that gate. Legit, I'll show you on the way back. Look. There's the gate, there's the fence, and a little path around where everyone walks. See, I told you, I'm not breaking any laws. Ah, game on then for the spot for the night, down in Moffat. It's about a two and a half, three hour drive. It's three o'clock now, quarter past, so I guess we're gonna be getting there in the dark, but yeah, it's, it's a good little spot, so yeah, let's rumble, eh? Getting closer, the old green hill stairs, don't you know, on the beam 719. Pitch black, can't see bow. A nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice leading. It's country sweet. Gotta be honest, all these blooming park ups in Moffat that are near the main road, whatever it is, it's so random. You have to come off and then you drive about 10 miles, like next to the main road. And then all of a sudden, I've, like, I've crossed that main road twice. And now I'm going up into the hills. I don't get why you don't get off near where the park up is. Oh, saying all that, in we go. This is the spot. Let's see if we can find a flat bit this time. Ah, oh, it's, uh, it's not the best, but it's got a nice view. Good little spot, this one. It's not very flat, I'll give it that. I have had to get the chocks out on the two wheels on the right hand side. It's a little bit on the pistachio if you know what I mean but yeah not too bad it should be quiet this road gets caught quiet oh, last time after about nine o'clock no bother I was considering driving back to the Midlands tonight but to be honest I can't be asked. I think we just set up the crib and do a mad bit of chill wiring for the night it should be pretty good <laughs> gotta be honest I'm really hungry as well I've had next to nothing to eat all day Bit of a nightmare. Another thing I'm testing out as well, the old back tooth. I had a feeling about two weeks ago, wait four weeks for it to get done, which is why, or well, one of the reasons I didn't want to go away with it to Europe with a mad hole in my face. So yeah, that's been done. And it's kind of held out, held out for the most part. Every now and again, it sort of gives you that twinge like, ooh, hello. Yep, you've had a feeling a couple of weeks ago, but not painful, not like a sketchy sort of twitch out pain or anything. So yeah, I think that'll be good. Oh, I'll tell you one thing that's not been good though that I tested out, or a bit miffed about it as well. The new camera, the Insta360 times three or whatever the bloody hell they call it. Rubbish. I mean, I'll hold my hands up. I did only get it because it got a few features on it that I really wanted to use for the snowboard. And no, that sounds mad. I got it on the Argos card. But um, the thing with it is, for me, editing on the road, it's ridiculous. Because it takes these 360 shots, which are the best shots to take with it, you then have to put it through its own little editor to process and convert the file so and be usable in my normal video editor, which... While I'm doing that on the road, it takes massive amounts of power to actually process the file. And the thing with it is, my thought was to use it as a dash cam, which it kind of works brilliantly as a dash cam because you never miss anything, 360 shot. But like I say, you have to then convert all of those files. It's just too much. It'd be better off using a GoPro and just sticking with flicking it around with my hand. There's no other way around it either. If you've got an Apple Mac, I think they have a little plug-in that can take those files. They're like an LRV or something. Yeah, my editor won't take those. And I'd be wary about advising people to buy one as a vlogging camera. I think you'd be better off with either your mobile phone or a GoPro, mate. I don't think them Insta360s are the way to go. Even the me mode 
which is like a mode where it just focuses on you as you move around. I thought it was going to be brilliant for snowboarding. And to be honest, it was crap. You're better off just taking the normal 360 shot and then funking it around and setting it up in their editor later. And you know what? The worst thing about it is, whatever it does, the maximum FPS frames per second you can get is 60. On my GoPro, I always record with 120. It's just better for when you're panning the camera around. It doesn't give that shaky, blurred thing any less than 120. And sometimes you struggle a bit. Anyway, for now, oh, let's cook. Oh my days, this one's going to be a bloody disaster. Not really, but wait till we see what it is. <sighs> Got it. I just sat down here a minute ago. Mate, this is not flat. I feel like I'm falling that way. Oh, this is a nightmare. Take everything out again. Power pack, two snowboards. I hope I don't pull the bloody curtains down. <sighs> Give me a minute. <clears throat> oh, jeez. Fell down the hole. But no. <sighs> yeah, that actually feels mildly better. Right, where, where, where? Cooking. Oh, my days. Check this thing out. I wanted to do pad thai. So I bought some veggies to go with it, but I forgot to buy meat. Luckily, I'd got this. I don't know if I'll use it yet. Or, I don't know why I bought this, but check it out. It looks kind of random. It's chicken pakora, but not in it. No, it's iron brew flavour. So we could put that in there. Or well, the other option is turkey rashers. I don't know. I was hoping these would be pre-cooked and I've not got a faff about them. You just eat them because I'm absolutely famished. And then maybe put some turkey rashers in that. I don't know. Let's have a look. Dang it. Bloody things. I, I, I'm pretty sure they're pre-cooked, mate. It's telling me to cook them for eight to ten minutes. I don't know. I can't believe anything that bloody packet says. This is ridiculous. Look, read it. Honestly, it says it's adhering to a thousand-year-old recipe. What, bloody iron brew chicken pakora? Iron brew, mate. Who had that a thousand years ago? Come on. Scots are hardcore anyway. They don't even need the damn stuff, mate. They definitely didn't have it a thousand years ago and were intertwining with Indians from gold knows where. Or Bangladesh. No, it's a lie. Anyway, bugger. I bloody pre-eat the damn thing. Oh, that sucks. I just want to eat it. I'm so hungry, honestly. I've had like an eggy peg sandwich, I think, and a couple of chockey bars all day. It's just not enough. And I've been bumbling around like I have. What you meant? Just try and roll. I mean, it's telling me to cook them in the microwave for like one minute, you know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. Probably not the best of our day eating it, bro. Blech. Proper gutted with this thing. Pick the wrong thing up, I have. 100%, mate. I wanted bloody haggis. I don't know why I didn't buy it. I think the only haggis he had was like a chilli haggis thing. And yeah, this looked less spicy. Lo and behold, it's bloody not, is it? That's why it's supposed to come with a mint sauce. This is a chilli chilli sauce. It'll blow me bloody face off, innit? it? I'm not going to be able to eat it. I am brewed chicken to be nice, though. What we ash? Right, let's test out the uh, strength of the chilli paste. Am I going to be backfiring in the morning? Really should wash my hands. It's not a great idea. Just tastes like a decent chilli. It's sweet. Oh, my God. Oh, low heat, low heat. Come oh, on, regulate, you know. I do want them to survive. I better time it, really, you know. Good. Yeah, good news. I've uh, managed to reheat some Pakora pre-cooked chicken without any major ooh, 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 traumas. Yeah, that'll go. It's a couple of black bits. Yeah, it's better that. Goes with the terrestrial. Really wishing there were the haggis with the mint sauce, though. Good. Burns not last night, wasn't it? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Traditional recipe. Thousand year old. Oh, hang on. <laughs> That's the iron brew. That's so random. It's like a, I don't know, the spice and then weird flavours. And yeah, it really is like the weirdest thing I've ever tasted. Kind of like, <laughs> I don't like it, but I do like it. What's the batter like on its own? That's just the iron brew. Oh, that's good. Oh, man. I should have bought another pack of them. Ah, <sighs> good. Ah, well, got to be honest, that teased the belly quite well. And to be fair, 
I don't think I'm going to end up cooking that pad thai. I think I'm going to treat myself to a pasta special and just chill out for the night and watch a bit of telly. There's a couple of bits on. Yeah, I'm just going to take it easy. It's been a good day today. <sighs> Wish we'd have got a bit of snowboarding at Glencoe. Looks like it's coming on Monday, but I just haven't got the time. It's all about Europe from here on in. <laughs> I really hope I can make it happen. But yeah, for now, I think I'm just going to chill out and I'll catch you guys in the morning. Morning. Well, I think it nearly still is. It's half past ten now. Oh, I woke up really late this morning. I wanted to be up early and head out and sort of start going back to Leicester so I can get back there early. And that's not going to happen now. It's going to be four or five o'clock before I get back. But yeah, nice night. I sat around doing nothing, just watching TV. Could have gone to bed early. But I did end up getting a good night's sleep, although I sweated loads again. I think what it is, because I've got such a good sleeping bag, it's been happening to me a few times on this trip. Because the sleeping bag's so good, and the outside temperature in the car is so low, my body and that temperature's fighting, and I end up like waking up in a pool of sweat sometimes, which I did twice last night. But I've got to say, as I mentioned a few times, this trip over the past couple of weeks has been amazing. Bit of everything, but from here on in, it's all about Europe. I've got everything crossed, fingers, toes and anything else I can to make this happen over the next few weeks. Hopefully, the next episode on the channel is going to be coming at you from France. For now, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely hit me in the comments. A big love to everybody who watches, likes, subscribes and comments on the videos and everybody who's a member of the channel, donate us on PayPal and buy me a coffee or like. Guys, whatever you're getting up to, you know you know. Take it easy, enjoy the camp, and stay stealthy. Bless you, Scotland. You've done me proud again. <laughs>